In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve inequalities with absolute value, such as absolute value of x less than k, or absolute value of x less than or equal to k, or absolute value of x greater than k, or absolute value of x greater than or equal to k. Of course, the expression inside the absolute value bars is not necessarily equal to x. It can be 2x minus 1, 1 plus x all over 3, and so on. We can easily solve these inequalities with absolute values if we know the geometric interpretation of absolute value and we know how to solve inequalities without absolute values. So let's start with the geometric interpretation of absolute value. So absolute value of x is actually the distance of the number x from the origin or from the number 0 on the real line. So for example, this k here, k is a positive number. So its distance from 0 is, of course, k units, this one here. And that is the absolute value of k. Also, in this case, you have here a negative number, negative k. So the distance of this from 0 is its absolute value, and the absolute value of that is the negative of negative k, which is also equal to k. So take note that absolute value of x is always greater than or equal to 0 because it represents distance from this origin or from 0. So with this interpretation of absolute value, so if you're solving this inequality, absolute value of x less than k, if k is a positive number, then it means that the distance of this x here from 0 is less than k. So that means your points are on this line segment, right? Excluding the endpoints k and negative k. So therefore, this inequality with absolute value is equivalent to this compound inequality. So that means that the number x must be between negative k and positive k, of course, excluding the endpoints. Now, how about absolute value of x greater than k? This means that the distance of the number x from 0 is greater than k. So that means the number x may lie on this ray. That means x is greater than k. Or the number x is on this side of the real line. So that means x is less than negative k. So for example, if k is equal to 5, then absolute value of x is greater than 5 is equivalent to what x greater than 5, which is correct. If you have a number greater than 5, then its absolute value is greater than 5, or x is less than negative 5. So again, if you have a number less than negative 5, its absolute value is also greater than negative 5. For example, negative 6 is less than negative 5. Absolute value of negative 6 is 6, which is greater than 5. What if these inequalities include equality? Let's say less than or equal to here and then greater than or equal to. Well, in those cases, if we have here equal sign and then greater than or equal to, so the equivalent statements will be for this uh, case here, we have negative k less than or equal to x less than or equal to k. So we only include the uh, equal sign also for the inequalities. And uh, for this greater than or equal to k, we also have x less than or equal to negative k or x greater than or equal to k. When we solve inequalities with absolute value, the first thing that we need to do is to write it in this form. We isolate the absolute value expression on one side of the inequality, and then afterwards we remove the absolute value by using the equivalent statement for this uh, absolute value inequalities. So keep in mind that we use this one for less than or less than or equal to, and then we use this one for greater than or greater than or equal to. Let's solve some inequalities. So let's consider this one. 
uh, absolute value of 2x minus 9 minus a 3 less than 2. So the first thing that we need to do here is to isolate the absolute value expression. So we have here absolute value of 2x minus 9. We add a 3 to both sides. We'll get here 2 plus a 3, which is equal to 5. Now, since this is less than, it's like you're looking for a number whose distance from the origin is less than 5. So this number 2x minus 9 must be between negative 5 and positive 5. So it must be between 5 and negative 5. Now we can solve this uh, compound inequality simultaneously. So here we can add 9 to all sides here to get rid of the minus 9 in the middle and we'll get here 4 less than 2x and then less than 14 and finally to find the x we divide all sides by 2 divided by 2 divided by 2 divided by 2 and we'll get 2 less than x less than 7 so therefore our solution set here so solution set which is usually denoted by SS, is equal to the interval notation of this one. It is the open interval 2, 7. It's all real numbers between 2 and 7. Now, what if we're given uh, a less than or equal to instead of strictly less than? So what will happen to our uh, solution. So actually our solution will be analogous to this uh, previous inequality. If we have here less than or equal to, so all we need to do here is to put equal signs. So you have less than or equal, and then less than or equal, 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 less than or equal. And our solution set will be, instead of open interval, 2, 7, it will be a closed interval 2, 7. Next, let's consider this inequality. So we have here absolute value of 3x minus 1 all over 2 greater than or equal to 4. So what can we say about this number 3x minus 1 all over 2? Since its absolute value is greater than or equal to 4, then that means that this number 3x minus 1 over 2 could be less than or equal to negative 4 because if, if you have a number that is less than or equal to negative 4, its absolute value will be greater than or equal to 4. Or if it is a positive number, then we are sure that a 3x minus 1 all over 2 must be greater than or equal to 4. Now we solve these uh, two inequalities separately. So we have here for the first inequality, we multiply two both sides. Since that is a positive number, it won't change the direction of the inequality. So you'll have here less than or equal to negative 8 and then add 1 to both sides. So you'll get here negative 7. And finally, we divide both sides by 3. It's a positive number. It won't change the direction of the inequality. So we'll get here x less than or equal to negative 7 over 3. Now for the second inequality, again, we multiply 2 both sides and we'll get 3x minus 1 greater than or equal to 8. Add 1 to both sides of the equation. We'll get a 3x greater than or equal to 9 and divide both sides by 3. So again, this is a positive number. It won't change the direction of the inequality symbol. So we have here x greater than or equal to 3. So our solution set will be either our x is less than or equal to negative 7 over 3. So in interval notation, so that is negative infinity to negative 7 over 3. Or so uh, in this case, we have equal signs, so we need to include the endpoint. Or, so this is union, so or x is greater than or equal to 3. So the in, in interval notation, so that is a 3 including 3, so that is square bracket, comma, infinity. Next problem, so let's consider this inequality here. 
again, the first thing that we need to do is to write the left-hand side as absolute value of something. So we, we need to get rid of this negative 7 here. So we can do that by multiplying negative 7 both sides of the inequality. So if we multiply both sides of the inequality, you'll get absolute value of 5 minus 3x. And then negative 7 times negative 2 is 14. But since we multiplied a negative number, we need to change the direction of the inequality. So don't forget to change the direction of the inequality here because in this case, we multiplied a negative number to both sides of the inequality. So now it is already in our desired form absolute value of something less than 14. So when we remove the absolute value, so what are the numbers 5 minus 3x whose distance from the origin is less than 14. So distance from 0 is less than 14. Then those are the numbers 5 minus 3x which are between 14 and negative 14. So this is the equivalent compound inequality without absolute value. Now we can solve this simultaneously. So next we get rid of the positive 5 in the middle by adding negative 5 to all sides of this inequality. So you have here plus negative 5 plus negative 5 plus negative 5. And this will give us negative 19 less than negative 3x and then less than you have here positive 9. Now, to find the x, we divide all sides by negative 3. So we have here negative 19 divided by negative 3, negative 3x over negative 3, and then 9 over negative 3. But since this is a negative number, the inequality symbol okay, will change direction from less than to greater than. So therefore, this becomes greater than and then greater than. And negative over negative, it's positive. So this is 19 over 3 greater than x greater than negative 3. But of course, we can write this down as x greater than negative 3. If we read this from right to left, this means it's negative 3 less than x and then less than 19 over 3. So this is less than 19 over 3. So therefore, our solution set is the open interval negative 3 comma 19 over 3. Moving to our last two inequalities. So here for this first one, again, the first step is to move the 4 to the right hand side of the inequality. So here we'll get absolute value 4 minus 7x less than 2 minus 4. So that is negative 2. So that is the same thing as subtracting 4 from both sides of the inequality. Now, as you can see from here, we have absolute value of something less than negative 2. But what can we say about absolute value of a number? Absolute value of a number is always greater than or equal to 0. So do you think it's possible to find a number whose absolute value is negative 2? Of course not, because again, absolute value of a number is always greater than or equal to zero. So therefore, our conclusion here is that this inequality has no solutions. So no solutions, or we write our solution set as empty set using this one, set containing no solutions, or we use also this uh, grouping symbol to denote uh, an empty set. For the second inequality, so we have here again, same thing. We move the 4 to the right-hand side of the inequality and we'll get absolute value 4 minus 7x greater than negative 2. So the difference here is only the inequality. This is less than and then this is greater than. But we know that this left-hand side is always greater than or equal to zero. So if it is always greater than or equal to zero, then it is always true that its value is greater than negative two for all x. So therefore, all real numbers are solutions. 
So all the real numbers here, all the real numbers are solutions. So x can be any real number. So we write down our solution set, which is equal to set of all real numbers, or you may write this in interval notation, negative infinity to positive infinity.